This video is just a quick little design to be able to mount my 360 camera to use it as a webcam. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. I've already explained what this video is, but in a nutshell, I have this current webcam over in my home office and I want to be able to put this 360 webcam over in its place. So let's go ahead and design the mount that I need to go ahead and do this. Starting from a fresh blended file, let's go ahead and do this sort of pretty quickly and to a way that's semi-parametric, not absolutely everything is gonna be parametric here. And when I mean parametric, I mean I'm gonna be using Booleans and not applying them so that I can change them later on very easily. So I'm gonna select everything, delete it, bring in our cube, and this is going to be basically our initial Boolean. So this is gonna be the camera itself. So I want to set this to about 46. That sounds like a good number to start with. All of this is over in the dimension sheet down below if you're wanting to know more of, of it. And then we're going to change the Y to be 20.3. And I'm going to change the Z to be 72. So this here is the initial shape of the camera that's going to be within this mount. Now, I've just gone ahead and changed the dimensions, so I've got to make sure that I apply the scale. Okay, now with that scale applied, I'm going to do a Shift D, make the exact same thing here, take this into edit mode, and I want to select basically every single face apart from this one. So I'll select this one, invert our selection, and there we have it. So I'm going to go Alt S here to scale this perpendicularly, but right this minute it's not perpendicularly because we haven't got even offset on. So let's press S. And that's now even offset. So with that even offset, I want to go with three millimeters of thickness. I've typed in three and there we go. Now we have three millimeters of thickness right there. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'm basically going to grab this, grab this one here and do a little ball cut like that right there. Okay, now let's take this outside bit back into edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and do a loop cut, bring that all the way up, go G, Z, minus three. And then I'm going to grab this face here. I'm going to extrude this out by 8.8. .8. But I have a 3D printer, so I'm going to probably just add a little bit more to that. So instead of 8.8, .8, I'm going to go for 9. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude this once again by 3. And then I'm going to grab this bottom face here and extrude this down by 7. All right, now that we're here, I could go ahead and create some vertex groups for the edges that I'm about to bevel, but I'm quite happy to just go ahead, grab both of these edges, then let's just go ahead and put in a bevel, and there we have it. So let's go for a bevel, make sure that this is a clamp overlap, go as far as we can, which will basically be seven millimeters, and there we have it. Now we've got some overlapping vertices right here, so let's select everything. So all of it, merge by distance, and you'll see that it's removed four vertices. Okay, now with that there, there's a bit too much of an overhang here for 3D printing. So I'm just gonna grab my cutting Boolean, take this into edit mode, go into our X-ray view. I'm gonna add a, a loop cut in it. I'm gonna go upwards, and then I'm gonna go G, Z minus a number that we like the sound of. Let's go with three. So we've gone three, then we're going to grab this face here and this face there. Let's go Alt E and let's extrude along normal. So let's extrude that out a little bit. Fantastic. Turn off our X-ray and there we have our final result. Now this right here is basically ready to set off printing. So you can just select it, go over to your 3D print toolbox and export for 3D printing. But just before we do that, let's go ahead, let's give it a quick little check. You can see everything's going perfectly fine. I'm gonna go the old school way. I'm gonna go File, Export, STL, and let's go and check this out over on my slicer. Now here's a little problem that some of you might encounter. If you're having this problem right here, it means that you did not select only selected. So make sure that when you're going ahead and doing these exports, that you select this, and then when you're doing your export, you can go file export STL, make sure it's only selected. So when you've got only selected sorted, you're going to get this result instead. And here we have it. This is exactly what we're wanting. So I'm going to go ahead, rotate this down. Let's go ahead and slice it. Give this a quick once over. I think all of that's going to be fine. I know that I'm able to bridge that distance there. Just go down. That seems nice and solid. Perfect for what I'm wanting. So let's go ahead and get this printed.
And for those of you who are interested to see what a crappy old webcam looks like compared to a 360 webcam, well, here it is. Now, do keep in mind, this isn't actually the end result of a 360 webcam because this normal webcam has had a couple of color changes and stuff. I've tried to get the best image out from it. But this one here, no color changes at all. And you would expect for a 360 camera that this would be a much wider field of view. Well, it is. It's got this weird face tracking feature. So if I cover my face for a little bit, you're going to see that the camera is going to pull back. And then you're gonna see this is the full resolution and sort of the field of view that you get. However, right this minute, I cannot turn off this lovely face tracking feature. I hate it, but it's what I've got right this minute. And no matter where I go in the scene, you're gonna see that it will follow me real slowly and real jerkily like it's not exactly fantastic but i've gone ahead and read in the forums that this is something that they're planning to upgrade in a firmware update but we'll see when that comes because the last comments that i saw that they said they were working on this was over a year ago who knows maybe they're going to put it into the next camera anyway that's enough of cameras in this precision modeling video and there you have it. There's another little project with precision modeling within Blender. I find that these very teeny tiny projects that you want to just get made as quick as possible where Blender really does shine because all you need is a couple of dimensions, a bit of imagination, and you're able to just form it out super duper quickly without having to really truly design things out like a CAD program really wants you to do. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And it means so much to me to have your support. It really does make this all possible. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.